but that on the aggregate, religion is a net loss for society. Even worse, it's dangerous and should be eradicated. In 1971, John Lennon released his infamous single, Imagine, inviting people to consider what the world would be like if we removed all the national borders and religious beliefs that fuel our tribalism. For Lenin, religion was a hindrance to human well-being, and not a help. And this is not an isolated opinion. In the aftermath of the September 11 attacks in 2001, something in the popular level of atheism shifted, and it found resonance in our secular age. The so-called new atheists, Dawkins and Dennett, Harrison, Hitchens, began to argue that religion isn't just a harmless hang-up of our evolutionary history, but that on the aggregate, religion is a net loss for society. Even worse, it's dangerous and should be eradicated. The headline, Religion Poisons Everything. So what does the Christian story say about our well-being, individually and collectively? Are we better off without religion? Well, let's start by zooming out to look at the historical footprint of Christianity. Because unfortunately, at least for John Lennon and the New Atheists, it seems that imagining a world without Jesus might not be the utopia they had in mind. In the last decade alone, there have been a spate of acclaimed books by secular and religious historians who, despite taking a sober look at the skeletons in the church's closet, remain convinced that Christianity is a net gain for society. Recognizing the unique shadow cast by Jesus, these scholars argue that the Christian story was the historical catalyst for the scientific revolution and of the emergence of the core conviction in the West that all human beings are made in God's image and so share inalienable dignity, a belief that in turn sparked women's equality and civil rights movements, reforms to open education and healthcare to all, and the rise of charity and welfare support. Tracing the best features of our contemporary civilizations back to Jesus, they argue that his teaching and example end up being the very thing that exposes the dark side of religion, serving as the standard by which even secular people denounce any of the historical abuses perpetrated by Christians. When we decry the greedy hoarding of wealth, uh, the abuse of the vulnerable, or the violence of the powerful, we are not criticizing people for being Christian, but for not being Christian enough. So to erase Jesus from the history books and Christianity along with him seems more like a dystopian project than any recipe for a dream. And when we zoom in to examine our own personal experiences, whilst I can certainly relate to those who have endured dark episodes tied to Christianity, it turns out there is another dimension to religion that is worth considering. Namely, that God is good for you. As it so happens, sociological research into the relationship between religion and personal well-being is a highly developed field, with mountains of controlled studies performed, especially in Western countries where Christianity has been culturally dominant. And the findings of these studies are unambiguous. According to the Magisterial Handbook of Religion and Health, published by Oxford University Press, there are a myriad of ways in which religious belief and active participation in a religious community contribute to human flourishing. From better mental health outcomes and personal satisfaction scores, a sense of purpose to rich relationships, these findings, unnerving to many in our secular age, are what prompted Professor Robin Hanson, an atheist economist, philosopher, and physicist, to admit on Sam Harris's podcast that religious people are better off on pretty much all of our standard metrics. Now, none of this proves that God exists, or that the Christian story is true, but it does seem to bankrupt the idea that religion is a hindrance to our well-being. After all, religion is just a sociological container. It's something we use to label a particular set of beliefs, practices, and experience. And whether you are better off with or without religion depends entirely on the contents of that container. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus promises that he did not come to hinder life, but to give it, and life in all its fullness. By teaching us about who God is and who we were created to be, what has gone wrong with the world and how we can set it right, the Christian story offers a set of answers to life's deepest questions that has transformed the world and that's continuing to change me. So sure, imagine, because the world may be better off with a whole lot of things, but Jesus is not one of them. Dan here from Questioning Christianity. Thanks so much for checking us out. We are all about helping you connect the Christian story to life's deepest questions. So if you're enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe and click the bell on YouTube and then go ahead and follow us on socials.